From the Oklahoma Newsroom, this is Orange Alert, our weekly extended look at Oklahoma State football. I'm Jenny Carlson here in studio with fellow columnist Barry Trammell and OSU beat writer Scott Wright. Guys, spring football is upon us, and it's time to talk about what uh, the Cowboys need to do, what we are expecting to see, all those sorts of things. Scott, we have to start with quarterback. Um, obviously, a year ago we were talking about this as well and who was going to take over for Mason Rudolph. It was a year uh, with Taylor Cornelius in that role, but now he's gone. So what's the expectation right now with, with these quarterbacks? A couple guys that have been on campus already for a while. Silence. Lots of it. I uh, I don't expect Mike Gundy to tell us anything. I mean, this is kind of this is kind of the uh, this is kind of the grand opening of of the quarterback battle. You know, they the soft opening came back in uh, in in bowl practices when they both got a chance. Taylor Cornelia stepped to the side and they got their opportunities to run with the uh, with the with the first team offense. Uh, but now they're uh, they're really going at it, and this is their opportunity to uh, for one of them to take a step ahead. Um, that being said. Oklahoma State wants both of them on campus in uh, in August, and so uh, so there aren't going to be any uh, any big decisions made in the spring. There aren't going to be uh, you know uh, any uh, any. There's not going to be any real separation that we're going to see. Um, we're going to we're going to hear a lot of uh, generalities from from Mike Gundy when he talks about these guys, and and uh, and probably from the the, uh, the players that we talked to as well. Uh, not a, not a lot of specifics, not a lot of uh, information that's actually going to be coming out of uh, of this camp. Um, because they, uh, they, like I said, they need both of these guys to stick around for uh, for August and uh, and and be ready to go. So um, there's uh, there's it's obviously an important thing that's uh, that's going to be going on. But um, you know, Mike Gundy is is going to keep uh, pretty tight wraps on it, and, and we're, I just don't think we're going to hear a lot about it. Barry, I mean, when you think about this quarterback battle, we've literally seen one of these two guys in a college game wearing an OSU uniform, Drew Brown, handing off in the bowl game, that was it. That's all we saw a year ago. But is there a sense of who or how the Cowboys need to go with this? I mean, they, they've got a little bit of an, a, you know, obviously an older guy in Drew Brown, younger guy in Spencer Sanders, but is there is there a leaning? Do they need to go with the younger guy who's gonna be there a while? Where, where do you come down on all this? Here's, to me, is the, the compelling question in search of an answer. And most of us don't know the answer. Maybe the OSU coaches do. Is Spencer Sanders, is he living up to the hype? That's, my, that's what I want to know. He came out of uh, Denton as a uh, premium prospect, big time college football quarterback prospect, the kind of guy who could have taken over as a true freshman if he would got here in the spring last year. He wasn't here in the spring. Taylor Cornelius grabbed the job, did fine with it, really wasn't a quarterback issue all year. But is he that kind of prospect? Is he what we thought he was coming out of high school? If he is, then I think it's his job and he'll be a long time started at OSU if healthy. But you never know. Some guys are, some guys aren't. So to me, that's the question. If Spencer Sanders is, is what we thought he was, he'll be the quarterback. But if he's not, if he's either slow to develop, if he's not quite the talent we, we thought he was or the OSU coaches thought he was, if if his uh, adjustment to the college game is a little bit is a little bit uh, sluggish, well then Drew Brown has a chance to win that job and do well. So to me, that's the question. If if Spencer Sanders is what we thought he was, then I think he'll be the quarterback. And Barry, I think that's what Oklahoma State needs to happen. I think that's the the, the best scenario for them to have him take that job and run with it now, rather than have a, 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 another one-year stopgap, and then you're looking for, uh, for for some continuity from that position. I think if you can get him in there now, um, you know, I hate to see it for Drew Brown, a guy who, who gave up a, a starting job at Hawaii to come here and compete, to sit out two years and not, and not get the starting job, but I think Oklahoma State needs Spencer Sanders to be that guy. Do we have, again, these are, these are questions that may not be easily answered because we really haven't had the interaction with, with these guys, but Sean Gleason's arrival, Scott, is there an indication of how that might play into this question of, of quarterback? A little bit, because Spencer Sanders is more of a, more of a running quarterback. Uh, Sean Gleason has some experience in, uh, in coaching the quarterback run game. He did that really effectively in his last year at Princeton. 
and 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 that's something that uh, that Mike Gundy wanted to implement into this offense. The guys that that Gleason has has started recruiting already are guys that uh, that can run a little bit as well. Now Drew, Drew Brown can run too, but he's not the effective runner that that Spencer Sanders is. Who uh, you know, Spencer Sanders is a multi-sport athlete, really good basketball player, a high jumper and, and sprinter in track, a guy who can do a lot of things with his feet. So um, you know, looking at what he can do, uh, I think Gleason. Is, uh, is is going to uh, to be able to implement some things that are a little bit different than uh, than what we've seen from uh, from the Cowboys the last few years and and get that quarterback run game more involved then you add Charlie Dickey the offensive line coach who's been at Kansas for uh, for, for 10 years a place where uh, it basically feels like they invented the quarterback run game but um, so he's going to bring some things as well that, that can make that transition a little bit more smooth and uh, and make Spencer Sanders I think more effective in this offense Barry uh is there, are we to expect a lot of change with Sean Gleason in terms of this offense, or is this just going to be the same sort of offense? What's your, I mean, again, I know this is a lot of guesswork because we really haven't interacted, but what we know of Sean Gleason's past, are, are, are we sort of thinking this is a continuation of what we've seen at Oklahoma State's offense for the last eight years or more? If Sean Gleason walked up on this step right now and slapped me in the face, I would say, who are you, young man? I wouldn't have, I don't know what the guy even looks like. Um, so I don't know. I have no idea. And let me tell you what, Sean Gleason has no idea what Big 12 defenses look like. Uh, and I realize they're not any good, but they're also, <laughs> they're better than Dartmouth. <laughs> so I don't think we can look at Sean Gleason for clues. I think we have to look at Mike Gundy for clues. and. Mike can be a little uh, off uh, the middle of the road. He sometimes deviates. But one thing he has consistently said over the last several years is OSU, basically since 2010 when he hired Dana Holgerson, OSU has developed an offensive identity. And Gundy believes that the Cowboys can go out and hire coaches who can adapt to that identity rather than coaches who bring in their own identity. So I tend to think things will look similar to what they are. Now, the difference is if your quarterback is Spencer Sanders, he's not the Marlboro man. He's not, you know, long, tall Mason Rudolph standing in the pocket. He, so you'll do different things because of that. But I don't think outside of the, outside of the quarterback of variation in terms of mobility, I don't think you'll see a ton of difference in schematics or philosophy. Yeah, and it's interesting, Scott, you hit on the, the fact that, you know, offensive line is once again uh, under a new, a new coach, which, frankly, I'm not saying that's going to have more impact on this Oklahoma State offense, but it potentially could be as significant because Mike Gundy has made, has made it pretty clear. He, he doesn't want to change the offense significantly. But how those offensive linemen play, that could be a whole different, you hit on that, but that could be a whole different thing for this Oklahoma State offense. Yeah, it, it absolutely could. I mean, Charlie Dickey comes in with a, with a little bit different, of a, a different perspective than what Josh Henson had, even though you go back to Josh Henson's history and, and he was, uh, you know, with, the, with Les Miles forever and he was that I-formation power run game guy, uh, but he had really adapted to the spread and, and understood that. Um, now Charlie Gleason has uh, has he's he's done some things that are that are out of the spread. He's been places like Utah and uh, and places that uh, that spread it out and throw the ball around a lot. Uh, but he's been ten years at Kansas State under Bill Snyder, where uh, they really focused on their offensive line being being physical and uh, and disciplined. And and those are the two things that you expect him to bring to the table. Uh, and then he is going to have some ideas about uh, about different ways to uh, to run the ball, whether it is the quarterback or the running back. The uh, the Oklahoma State run game was a, was a lot of uh, a lot of zone read inside outside and uh, and pretty basic and, uh, and just trying to create holes and get their guys in space. Uh, but Charlie Dickey could bring some other ideas that uh, that could um, make things a little bit more complex in the way that, that Oklahoma State runs the ball. Well, we're talking offensive line, but defensive line, Barry, may be the thing on the defensive side of the ball that is probably most concerning to the Cowboy coaches heading into the spring, losing a bunch of guys. That was such a position of depth and talent and strength over the years. Where's your level of concern as it relates to the defensive line going into the spring? High, very high. You know, the loss of somebody like Darian Daniels, who, you know, graduated, decides to go play his last year at Nebraska, that really hurts. Because you mentioned it, the Cowboys 
above the you know above the norm have had quite a bit of defensive line depth and historically that's been a tough a tough place for uh, for schools like Oklahoma State there's not enough defensive linemen to go around and a whole bunch of them are at Alabama and Clemson so the percentages are low for everybody else OSU got pretty good on the defensive line which put you ahead of the curve uh, among the rest of uh, the defenses that depth is gone they got to rebuild there it's going to be a it's going to be a situation and you think about you know the uh, what, what that's meant for the linebackers and the DBs they're going to be under more pressure than ever uh, because that line is going to be rebuilt I think that's a very serious uh, concern for Jim Knowles in that defense Scott that that position for a lot of years it was an annual problem spot for the Oklahoma State team what Joe Bob Clements has done really made that almost a non-factor on the list of concerns this for the first time in a long time is one of those areas where you have to really set up and take notice you know now two guys coaching that position with Greg Richmond back there is there a guy a player that you feel like is going to be most under the gun to maybe help solidify that group as the spring goes on you know there uh, there are a few guys because they lost so many yeah. that they've uh, they've really got to look for for a few guys to to step into some important roles. Brock Martin, a uh, defensive end from Ulaga, was a guy that uh, that they started using in similar ways to they to how they used Jordan Brailford last year, where they would move him out from that defensive end spot, line him up as a middle linebacker, as an outside linebacker, do some different things. Mike Scott on the other side is a uh, he's a he's a, you know a, a lanky guy at six five and two hundred fifty pounds uh, but he proved to be a, a really dangerous rush in and a, a guy that uh, is really athletic and do and can can do a lot of things uh, you look on the interior it's going to be maybe some newcomers maybe uh, you know if Israel Antoine the, the transfer from Colorado gets eligible um, based on uh, on uh, not having to sit out a year he could be a guy that makes an immediate impact on the inside of that defensive line Sion AIC, the, the junior college transfer that they picked up, is a guy that they feel uh, is a, a guy who's physically ready to compete at, at 300 pounds in the middle of that defensive line. So it's going to be some new names that are, uh, that are popping up in there, um, and they, uh, they need somebody to sort of establish themselves as the leader and the, uh, and the guy to take that, that spot that Jordan Brelford had, uh, had really taken the last couple of years as he really developed himself into a pro prospect. Um, but uh, it's going to take some time to figure all of that out figure out what the depth chart is, is really going to look like, and uh, it's going to be a, an interesting process to watch it all unfold. Barry, while that defensive line might be the most uh, pressing position for the Oklahoma State defense, obviously, you know, year two under Jim Knowles, there needs to be improvement overall. If you're, if you're in Jim Knowles' seat this spring, what do you want to see from start to finish? And obviously defensive line, you want to see that position evolve. But what would you like to see out of your guys to feel like you're in a much better spot heading into the offseason and then into uh, to camp in the fall? Well, I don't know if I would feel good no matter what this spring. Uh, because for one thing, it's not Mason Rudolph and James Washington over there throwing at you. You're going to have a new quarterback you're going against when you're, when you're you know, going good on good. So the, the gauge, the measurements are going to be off. You're not going to feel truly confident until you get into September. But if guys can just get in the right place, um, you know, that's, that's, about, that's really the goal of spring. You, you don't want guys hitting too much, so you're not going to be able to find out too much about aggression, too much about physicality. Those days are gone from, from uh, football practices. So if you can just get guys to know where they want to be and, and should be, then you're moving down the road to, to building a, a defense the way you want to. So to me, the mental aspect is what you can most find out in the spring. It should be better off because, you know, in defense of these, this Cowboy defense, they did have a new coordinator last year, a guy that brought in a different philosophy uh, from, from Knowles previous to, to uh, Glenn Spencer. It's a little bit of adjustment. It should not be that kind of learning curve this year. So that's what I would want is, is that mental the, the uh, just lining up right, getting in the right place, making the adjustments on the fly, those kinds of things, I think is something you can learn and, and have a gauge for in the spring. Scott, I thought the, the Cowboys secondary made some nice strides in the bowl game. I thought they might have played as well from start to finish as we saw. Now, some mistakes, some problems, but playing Drew Locke, a guy that's going to be a high draft pick, uh, you know, not a Big 12 offense, but still a pretty ha pass-happy offense, Mike Gundy said during bowl prep that he doesn't know how much guys carry over what happens in the bowl into, you know, the next day for that matter. But 
Is that the kind of thing that you feel like could be built on by this secondary? Yeah, absolutely. This is a this is a group that was all young. Uh, you had three true freshmen out there playing in the main rotation. Uh, a true sophomore, Malcolm Rodriguez, who was uh, who really only played special teams as a true freshman. So you've got a lot of young guys who were learning and growing in this system, and uh, and now you're almost to the point. You add in, uh, you know, you you got three year starters at, at your cornerback spots with Rodarius Williams and AJ Green. All these young guys in the middle at, at, at the three safety spots. You've almost got more guys than uh, than than you can uh, get on the field at one time. So it's a it's a good problem to have for Oklahoma State right now because they feel like Tanner McAllister is a guy who can make a lot of impact, and he had sort of been uh, relegated to uh, to a guy who just rotated in. Uh, in situational spots. So uh, you look at Jarek Bernard, Colby Peel, guys who were in the safety rotation from the beginning of the year, really uh, really developing and, and, and sort of culminating with that bowl game. This is a group that I think has real promise going forward. Obviously in the Big 12, you're gonna have your bad days. You're gonna have your moments where you, uh, where you have a bust in coverage and you, uh, you've got guys running past you and, and those things are gonna happen when you're playing teams that throw the ball 40 and 50 times a game. But on the uh, on the overall scheme, I think that uh, that this is a, a secondary that's ready to start making a really big impact on uh, on this defense. All right, lots to be seen, heard, and figured out this spring by the Cowboys. We'll have all your coverage, so be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.